Hi, I'm Dr. Todd Cooperman, president and founder of ConsumerLab.com, which has been testing all types of health-related products since 1999. And I'm here outside to talk today about sunscreens, because there's been a lot of news lately about problems with sunscreens. So I want to help you understand what you should avoid when you're buying a sunscreen. I'm a firm believer in the use of sunscreen. In fact, I'm wearing some right now, because sunscreen not only prevents sunburn, but also reduces the risk of skin cancer. So I'm going to quickly tell you about the types of sunscreen ingredients that are out there, some concerns with them, and tips on how to basically avoid problems with sunscreen. There are basically two types of ingredients in sunscreen. The first are mineral-based ingredients like zinc oxide and titanium dioxide, and these block the UVA and UVB rays from the sun. So they are a broad-spectrum type of uh, sunblock. UVB radiation is what causes sunburn, and UVA is what causes long-term skin damage and skin aging. The only real downside to using a mineral-based sunscreen like zinc oxide or titanium dioxide is that they have a whitish color, so they're not quite as attractive in a sunscreen, but you can get sunscreens that are tinted uh, that avoid that problem. The second type of sunscreen ingredients are compounds, also known as organic compounds, that have been designed to absorb UVA or UVB wavelengths, or both. Although they're called organic compounds, they're very different from organically grown foods. If you look at the active ingredients list on a sunscreen, you'll be able to identify these compounds. The ones that end in ATE or eight, like homosalate or octosalate, block UVB rays only. Avobenzone, which starts with an A, blocks UVA only. Others, like oxybenzone and octocrylene, block both UVA and UVB rays. Only avobenzo, however, blocks the longest UVA waves. Uh, so it's a good one to have if you don't have a mineral-based sunscreen and you're only using organic compounds. Now, there have been a number of recent studies that have raised concerns with sunscreens. Um, one of them is the finding of benzene, which is a cancer-causing agent, in a lot of sunscreens, in particular, spray sunscreens have been found to have benzene. Not all of them. We actually have a list on ConsumerLab.com of over 200 sunscreens that have been evaluated for benzene, and we show which ones contain and which ones have not contained benzene, uh, as well as those have been, that have been recalled for benzene. It's not clear where the benzene is coming from. It may be uh, created by the chemicals, either before or after manufacture. Another carcinogen that's been found in sunscreens lately is benzophenone. Benzophenone may be created by octocrylene, which is one of the organic compounds that are intentionally put into sunscreens. So you may want to avoid octocrylene. Again, you can look at the list of the active ingredients in your sunscreen. Another concern with the organic compound-based sunscreen ingredients is that they can degrade over time. But what's been found recently is that if there's a mixture containing both a mineral-based sunscreen like zinc oxide with an organic compound like avobenzone, the, or the zinc oxide has actually degraded the avobenzone when exposed to sun within two hours, basically losing most of the avobenzone activity. So another thing to look out for on the ingredients list of a sunscreen is that you don't want to mix a mineral-based sunscreen with an organic compound, particularly avobenzone. Two other concerns with the organic compounds are, one, they're more likely to cause skin irritation, and second, uh, they have been found more likely to uh, disturb aquatic life uh, and not being basically reef safe. In fact, some of the organic compounds have been banned recently in places like Hawaii and parts of Florida. There's also a little bit of concern about aquatic life and nano size or nanoparticles of zinc oxide, but you can certainly find many products out there that have zinc oxide that are not nanoparticles. If you're interested to know the type of sunscreen that I use, it's a mineral-based sunscreen for the reasons that I stated earlier, because I'm concerned about the organic compounds. And it also has a tint, because frankly, if it has a tint, I'm more likely to use it and not have a very white face. So the one that I like is uh, from Elta MD. It's a UV uh, broad spectrum SPF 41 product. And you should look for products that have at least SPF of 15, um, if not 30, if you're gonna be outside for a long period of time. It's also uh, water resistant. 
uh, for 40 minutes because if I'm, go I'm go often going swimming. And if you look at the active ingredients, you'll see basically just zinc oxide uh, and titanium dioxide. If I'm going to be outside a long time or in the water for a very long time, I may use a wax-based uh, mineral uh, sunscreen on my lips. I like this product. It's called Wax Head. And it's essentially zinc oxide, 10% non-nano uh, sized zinc oxide in a, in a wax base. So be sure when you're choosing a sunscreen uh, to choose one that has a good SPF factor, at least 15. Um, actually, you want it also to be broad spectrum, so you're covering both UVA and UVB because the SPF actually only refers to the UVB spectrum. It says nothing about protection from UVA. Again, you may want to avoid the organic compounds. You don't want to mix avobenzone with uh, zinc oxide as it may degrade the avobenzone. You want to avoid probably octocrylene because that can become benzophenone, which is another carcinogen. You may also want to look at the list on Consumer Lab of products that have been found to contain benzene, another carcinogen. So this is Dr. Todd Cooperman again with ConsumerLab.com. There's more information about all of this on the website at ConsumerLab.com, and if you have any comments or questions, uh, please post them. Thanks for your time.